Hello and welcome to Hamburg at Bio Europe 2019. This is the 25th anniversary uh, meeting where uh, pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies and other uh, stakeholders in the ecosystems uh, around the life sciences space all get together. One of the interesting new areas that is gaining a lot of attention is around the microbiome. I'm, I'm joined by Eric de la who's a venture partner at Seventure Partners. So Eric, you guys are currently raising a fund in the microbiome space. So how, how's that going at the moment? So this is our second microbiome fund called Health for Life number two. Uh, we finished investing Health for Life one uh, around the middle of last year and uh, shortly after that started raising Health for Life two. Yeah. It's going very well. Uh, we have as uh, our CEO Isabelle de Cremou, and this is under her leadership, uh, we have raised more than 200 million and the target was 200 million. Right. So we're already over target. We're still fundraising, uh, finding the last commitments, etc. This is soon coming to an end yeah. and we hope to be somewhere between 200 and 250 million by the time the fund uh, stops uh, fundraising. Okay, so, so, so what, what, what are sort of the, uh, the events or the trends that are resonating with people who want to you know, participate in your, in your funds? Well, first, we see that a range of industries, not only pharma companies, but also nutrition companies, uh, ingredient makers, animal health companies, etc., are interested in the microbiome. Yeah. And the interest keeps growing. Um, I think what fuels this growing interest is the near-term availability of efficacy data uh, from the microbiome, seen as a very wide area. So the microbiome is not only bug fighting bug, it yeah. could be small molecule um, against targets in the microbiome, it could be bacteriophage, so it's a very broad view, and that's the, the view we take. In this very broad universe, it attracts the attention of a range of industries who wants to understand the field better and who wants to be the first to know when something moves. And that's where we are in a central position with Seventure. We talk to all these actors and we can uh, give back a summary of non-confidential information to our limited partners. Right. And I mean, and if we look at the, the sort of the development of the microbiome, I, I mean, as a word, it started appearing in the, sort of the press and in, in, in the literature um, probably just over a decade ago, uh, I guess it would be. How, how far are we to actually understanding sort of the, the full potential of the, of the microbiome? Is the science still early or are we beginning to actually see some sort of, uh, your potential tangible benefits? So the, the science, I would say, is maturing. So we have more and more papers that don't do correlations. If this is modified, then this happens to the body. Is it correlation or causation? This yeah. question has largely gone. Yeah. People are doing cause, causation studies and try to understand what leads, what are the, the causative links between a, an event in the microbiome and a disease. What's the etiology of the disease connected to the microbiome, etc. And we're seeing some some solid data to base therapeutic programs on in academia. Now, in biotech, I would argue we're still in the pioneering phase, and we will be in the pioneering phase until we've got some really solid phase 2B, phase 3 results, and the first products, Rx products, arriving on the market. So people are still searching what are the good um, clinical strategies, what are the good uh, go-to-market strategies, and uh, this will take another maybe two, three years until the pioneering phase gives way to products and, and, and value creation for either consumers or patients. Consumers for the nutrition, diagnostic side, and patients for the Rx side. And the, the, the first fund, um, so Health for Life One, one. Yep. Um, are you fully funded with that? Is, it, that? is that fully committed now? So that fund has finished its investment period yeah. around the middle of last year. Yeah. That means we're not funding any new companies, sure. but we are carrying on second, third financings with existing company and the fund. So the fund is still some years away from being liquidated. Yeah, yeah. And the first, the first few companies have exited. We've had one exit, the sale of a company to Japanese uh, pharma and nutrition maker Ajinomoto. Yeah. That was uh, already two years ago, I believe. And we've seen a uh, company Biomex list on the New York Stock Exchange two weeks ago. Yeah. That was also one of our portfolio companies. So companies in my portfolio are maturing, we're accompanying them, 
giving, giving them more funding as required and, and, and trying to get them to a value point. Right, and with the, with the, with the new fund, uh, Health, <coughs> Health for Life 2, um, have you actually already started to, to, to make investments out of that fund? Yes, thanks to the uh, schedule of closings uh, when the fund gets bigger and bigger, we've already been able on the first few closings to have liquidity available and to make investments. So we made a few investments uh, in companies, uh, uh, wh whom could I quote, uh, Axial Biotherapeutics is a fund two investment and there's a few others as well. So this is, this is developing. Uh, we're not waiting for the final closing until we make investments. Okay, and the you're still raising or, or bringing in the last uh, you know, commitments from, from uh, LPs uh, for, for, for that fund. When do you anticipate closing the door on that, on, on Health for Life 2? I guess that's a question for our CEO, Isabel. She has the mastery of the schedule and she's really leading the charge there. Um, I would defer that question to her. Right. And that investment period, what is it? Is it normally three to four years? A typical investment period is four years yeah. to get new companies in and once this is done then we raise another fund and finish the companies or, yeah. or accompany the companies to an exit in the current fund. Right. Okay. So well Eric, um, I'm sure we'll, we'll come back and, and hear what the progress we'll be making with, with the funds. When we come back and we talk next time there will be clinical data to discuss and I really believe the next 12 months will be critical in terms of you know, understanding what the microbiome can do in the clinic. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. Look forward to it. Thank you, Eric. If you found this video useful, subscribe to the channel and get the opportunity to see other content that we've got coming that will look at industry trends and discussions with thought leaders.